In today's training video, uh, I'm going to show you how to install Salesforce for Outlook. You're going to want to log into your Salesforce account, and once you've logged in, you're going to probably most likely go to your home page, home tab. You're going to want to click on your name up here and go to setup. That's going to bring you to here. What you're going to then want to do is look under personal setup to the left and go to desktop integrations. Click on the little triangle sign right next door to it, which will then open up this menu options. You want to click on the Salesforce for Outlook. Once you click on that, you're going to see two, two buttons. One's to view my configuration, and the other one is to download the latest version of Salesforce for Outlook, which is actually 2.1.1. Once you've, you're going to want to download this file to your desktop so it's easy to find. So once you've done with downloading that, you're going to minimize the, your Internet Explorer. And then you're going to double click on the Salesforce for Outlook that's on your desktop. And you want to follow all the prompts. You want to select English. During the installation, it's going to check to see if you have two main files that are required to run this. If it prompts you that you need to uh, download those two files, please do follow that installation. That are, they are required for you to run the Salesforce for Outlook. So once that has been completed, you'll get to this screen here. On this screen here, you're going to follow the basic command prompts. Um, you do want to accept the license and you want to keep hitting next. We want to install it on the C drive, so we're just going to click next and we're going to begin the installation. This may take, as it says, this may take several minutes. It could take several seconds, depending upon how fast your computer is, how much it's got to go through as far as uh, installing it. So this, this may take only just a few minutes. It can take a few seconds. So we're just going to wait and see how um, once this finishes, and then we'll continue on. And as you can see here, it uh, is almost done with this part of it. You're going to want to make sure that during this installation that you are out of Outlook. So as it's finishing up, um, it will then continue on once it's done and uh, it will let us know that we have successfully installed it. And as you can see, the icon for the Salesforce for Outlook did appear. Okay. So we want to start Salesforce for Outlook, so we're going to click Finish. This is going to start that, and as soon as it's done and finishing up the uh, startup, you eventually will see it down here in your taskbar. I'm just going to give it a few more, about a minute or so, or less. And as you can see, the Salesforce for Outlook did show up right there in the startup menu. So as you can see, it's right there. Notice that it is grayed out. That means that it's not connected. And as you can see, if you hover over, it says start Outlook to continue. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our Outlook. And as you can see, it's loading the add-on. That's always good. And this message popped up here because I had to reconfigure my Outlook to so that it would um, work with my generic email 
so what I'm going to do here is I am going to change my Outlook settings. So what you're going to want to do, once once Outlook has actually loaded up, you're going to see over here, you notice you've got your buttons here where it says Add Emails. So that, that when you have this, that means you're up and running. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that this is all configured. So you're going to click on this little arrow here, and you're going to see here that it says uh, the circle, the Salesforce for Outlook circle is now red. So you're going to want to right click on that and go to settings. Because now we have to configure that to work with your Salesforce login. So I'm going to go all the way back here to the beginning. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to enter in your Salesforce user ID and password right here. So we're going to enter that in. And once you've done that, you want to make sure that you check off the remember username and then click login. You want to allow the uh, Salesforce for Alec permission. So you want to click that. Now it's going to retrieve your configuration. This is based on your configuration file set up with your system administrator. Okay, so once you've logged in and have gotten into this into the Salesforce Outlook, you'll come to this screen here. This is where you can actually change your folders uh, for your events and tasks. Um, I probably recommend just leaving it the way they are. So just click on Next. This here enables you to sync inc or include private events and private tasks into Salesforce from Outlook. I would probably recommend leaving these unchecked. Um, that way you're not, if you have any like uh, doctor appointments or any personal tasks or events that you don't want everybody else to see in Salesforce, then I would leave these unchecked. So that way they don't get synced in. And then just click save. Now we've completely configured the Salesforce for Outlook con connector. So, and as you can see, sync is in progress um, that will complete the first sync usually can take the longest um, because it's got to sync the data back and forth but what you would do here is to say if I wanted to add this email here for an example into Salesforce so I'm going to double click on that email and I'm going to hopefully it will open up good it did you're going to see the button right here that says add email. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this on this button. And it's going to add that email to Salesforce. Now let's say I want to send an email to someone. So I'm going to send an actual email to myself. So I'm going to put my email address. Actually, I'm going to put my personal email address. If I can type. And I'm going to put on here test and test. So, see this button now, instead of add email, it says send and add. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that. And what this is going to do is it's going to send my email and then also add it. Okay, so once that's all done sending it, you'll notice that it will go into Salesforce and 
I believe I probably have been timed out. Okay, so once I'm in Salesforce, I'm going to go to my unresolved items just to see if any of the emails are there. Okay, and this shows that I have no emails that have gone into the unresolved items, so that's a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my contacts to see if my email posted on there. So I'm at my contact right here. And as you can see here, it's here is my contact record, has my personal email address. And we should see, and there's the emails that I sent right there. So it, it does work. So in Outlook, it does sync the emails. And for whatever reason, if you open up Outlook and you should also get the successful email saying that you successfully added an email to Salesforce. And it has a link to where it went. If, it, um, if you click on that link and it opens it up and goes to unresolved, then that's where you would have to go in and actually point it in the right direction of where it needed to go, whether it be a, to a contact or to an opportunity, um, an account, a lead. Um, in some cases, a case, if you guys are going to be handling cases, um, you can point it to the case. So wherever the ob whatever record it needs to point to in the unresolved sections, you will be able to point it to that direction. But if, if for some reason that these buttons right here do not show up when you load up Outlook, don't freak out or anything. It's not the end of the world. Um, you would just click on File, go to Options. And if you happen to scroll down to here where it says Add-ins, click on that. And then you would click on, in this where it says Manage, you would actually click on Disabled Items and then click Go. In here, it will say if the Salesforce for Outlook add-on is disabled. If it is, you click on it and enable it. Once you've done that, click OK. Close out of Outlook and then relaunch back into it. And that button should reappear again. OK. If it doesn't, then I would definitely get in touch with your system administrator for your company, and they will be able to do some further troubleshooting um, on that issue. But that pretty much completes our uh, tutorial training for this. Um, my name is John, and I work for Dobly Group, which we are a, a Salesforce CRM consulting company that does implementations and consulting services for the Caribbean and Central America regions. And thank you.